Okay, um, we're located, today's date is 10-30-2010, uh, and we are at the Children's Coalition Incorporated at 907 North Dixie Highway in West Palm Beach, zip code is 33401. The name of the person being interviewed is uh, Maxwell Nelson. Maxwell Nelson. And Max, what is your birth date? November 3rd, 1945. And what is your current address? 1805 Shadow Creek Road, Green Acres, Florida, 33413. Okay, and the people who are attending the interview is my, um, my Cartwright. Okay, and I am the CEO and founder of the Children's Coalition Incorporated. All right. Um, what war and branch of service did you serve in? I served in the Vietnam War uh, in the Army. Okay. Um, what was your rank and where did you serve? I served, my rank was Sergeant E5, and are you referring to in Vietnam or my total year service? Well, well um, just tell me. Well, I did uh, basic training in Fort Bragg. Okay, we're going to get to that. Okay, so just, thanks. just, and, uh, okay, I got you. Um, all right, so you served where in Vietnam? I served in, served in Third Corps. Uh, that's uh, the area around Saigon. Okay. All right. Um, were you drafted or did you enlist? Both. I was drafted, and after six days, uh, after six days, I enlisted. Okay. Where were you living at the time? In uh, Dover, Delaware. Okay, so the next question is why did you join, but you said you were drafted? I signed up for the draft. Okay. Oh, okay, all right. I signed up for it. Why did you pick the service branch you joined? Because it was the easiest one to, to go into with my status. Okay. Um, do you recall your first days in the service? Yes, I did. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yes, uh, actually before I even, before I even started, when they went through the uh, administration period, uh, you know, you have to shave your head uh, and uh, you had to be getting up four o'clock in the morning and uh, I was not used to that because I came from a hot climate and I ended up with uh, pneumonia. Oh boy. Okay. Um... So what did it feel like? Uh, it was very weird, very, very weird, and away from your family members and no contact with any family members. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, tell me about your boot camp training experience. Do you remember your instructors? How did you get through it? Yes, I don't remember their names, but I remember them, and uh, it was it was pretty good. Uh, I enjoyed it, the fact of the physical portion of it, but the uh, mental portion of it was pretty rough, but I endured it and uh, I realized at the end why it was being done and I appreciated it. Okay. Okay. Which wars did you serve in? Uh, the B Vietnam War. Where exactly did you go? Uh, well, the Third Corps area. Uh, I can give you the names. I got first. I got stationed in Phuc Vinh. I landed in Cameron Bay, then was got sent to uh, Phuc Vinh. Then Phuc Vinh, we got sent to Tainang, and then from Tainang, we ended up in ended up in Benoit. Do you remember arriving, and what was it like? Yes, uh, I arrived in Cameron Bay by the by the sea, and. Uh, uh, it was Where is that located? Uh, Cameron Bay. Yeah. It's located on the eastern sea, uh, China Sea. Oh. Of uh, of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. It's right by the beach, and uh, the what I first thing I noticed was the uh, the uh, burning. They call it the uh, burning the um, the waste, human waste. Mm -hmm. That's how they got rid of it. They burned it. Gotcha. So it was. All over, you know, that smell was all over the place. Very unpleasant. Yeah. What was your job assignment? 
I was a forward observer, which uh, mean I was in the artillery, but I got assigned to the infantry because I was the liaison between the artillery and the infantry. So anytime we made contact with the enemy, I was the one that called in the artillery to protect us from the enemy. Okay. Uh, did you see combat? Yes, I did. Want to yeah. talk about it? Or? Uh, yes, uh, I know my first, my first experience was uh, the first time I had to call in, had to call in the artillery because we got was like an ambush, and uh, uh, we, you know, I found that uh, guys found guys. Next next thing you know, just all of a sudden, next thing you know, you see guys, uh, you know, laying down on the floor, mm -hmm. uh, being shot, mm -hmm. and uh, so that was my first real. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That okay. was my second. Uh -huh. uh, my, well, that's the first time I had a chance to call in artillery fire uh, because we didn't know, we don't know how many people were out there, how many enemies was out there. So that was my first uh, chance to call in artillery fire. And we had to bring it almost on top of us. So we had to make everybody get down let everybody get down because the rounds was going to be dispersed for this. The uh, what? So the uh, rounds, the artillery uh -huh. rounds. Uh -huh. So the, the, the everybody had to get down so that the uh, shrapnel could, you know, go over overhead. So I, I even got hit from it. From really? It. Yeah. Okay. Got hit in the leg, huh? Yeah. Were there many casualties in your unit? Uh, in that, that, that day we suffered, we, we had about Three about three deaths in that, uh, and the rest uh, we had. Uh, we had about uh, seven to eight wounded in that skirmish. Mm -hmm. But um, the the combat, the most curious one was the day before we went into Cambodia. We um, uh, normally when you set up. In the when you set up in the jungles, you set up for one week, uh, LZ they call it LZ landing zone. Mm -hmm. But uh, our LZ was so big and had so many uh, weapon artillery weapon, we was there for almost thirty days, which is unheard of. Mm -hmm. But because it was that big, they never came at us. But Nixon uh, ordered the troops into Cambodia in in uh, nineteen seventy May first. To June thirtieth, he ordered all the he got the okay to go into Cambodia because the enemy had all the weapons stashed across the river over there. So intelligence told him that uh, that's where it was. So he got the permission. Mm -hmm. So I was in that. I was in. I was there for that assault. But the day before, the last day of April, we got we got hit from that on that LZ. But we were lucky because uh, we were just about to, two helicopters, two Cobra were just about to dis expel their rounds. I was the one that was going to coordinate and were to, you know, they do it every night, expel their rounds. Right. And uh, it just happened that there's a thing called Mad Minute that they do every night. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had just, was just doing the Mad Minute. Cause I I am an artillery. I don't I don't do the mad minute. Right. Cause um you know so uh, the helicopter was just above when it happened. They didn't know I didn't know what time it was going to be. It was eight o'clock that night. Right. And uh, what happened? One of one of them they shot back at us. Uh, we do mad minute every night. Never got shot back at. Mm -hmm. And since that happened, the old LZ knew that they were out there, but we didn't know which direction it was in. Right. But the helicopter, thank God, the helicopter saw where the round came from, where right. the flash came from. Uh -huh. So he went after, he went after the enemy. So everybody, they turn all, bring all the guns to that that area, uh -huh. and uh, we was shooting in that area until about four, or five o'clock that morning. They had to resupply because we ran out of ammunition. Uh -huh. So that morning, as sun up. 
as we went out they sent the patrol to mm -hmm. see what it was yep and we found five five rockets set up to launch into the LZ that they never got a chance to because they panicked right if they didn't shoot back they would have had us okay but the helicopter happened to be above when it happened uh -huh. And so we, that was the, what, the reason, only reason why we survived, because those five rocket launching pads, mm -hmm. not alone would have wiped us out. Right. So that was, I just said, uh, wasn't meant to be, you know, just wasn't meant to be for me. But that was the, uh, I think that was the closest it would come to getting wiped out. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh... Well, I guess with a, was that the most memorable experience? Uh, yes, as far as as far as the, the whole unit, as far as your I've had personal what else you scary. Got? Uh, well, when we first got into Cambodia, they had booby traps. The enemy had all the weapon cash booby mm -hmm. trap. Mm -hmm. They had a string. You pull that string, and the whole thing goes. And. Uh, we were in a, it, they were in a square. They, put, they have them buried in a square hole, hole but it's square. Right. You know, and uh, we was, I was in there with another, another uh, three of us was in there. It's a PFC and another, and we were told not to pull the strings. It's a booby trap. Mm -hmm. And here I'm standing in the hole, and the PFC, there's a string. He's, I didn't see it. He saw it, before, and he go pull. The strength. I thought that was the end of it. Right. It, but it didn't go off. Okay. <laughs> it was a dud. It was a dud. Okay. <laughs> Good. Well, out of that. Now, were you a prisoner of war? No. Okay. Okay. Were you awarded any medals or citations? Yes, a whole lot. But the highest one I got was the Bronx Star, with the V for valor. What other ones that can you remember of hand? Uh, the, uh, I have them here. And you listed them there? Yes. Okay, fine. Yes. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. How did you get them? Uh, I got them through the, um, that, the one where I call in the artillery, uh, the artillery strike that I called in. Mm -hmm. That was the one that, uh, and the one that, the one where I guess I had the helicopter, I was the one that was going is they came to me right they were the one that that found where the uh, enemy where he was shooting from where the flash came from okay but I was the one that coordinated was going to coordinate with them great okay okay let me see this says higher ranks may be asked about battle planning those who sustain injuries may be asked oh okay those who sustain injuries may be asked about the circumstances no. Um, Got to hit your leg. Yeah, but it didn't uh, penetrate. Okay. Well, just what happened? It just, uh, just the hard piece of metal just hit me, hit my pants, and uh, and fell. But it didn't, it didn't penetrate. You know, it didn't uh, cause any damage. But I, okay. I got hit from one of the straps. You know. Right. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna move into. The fourth and final segment. Let's see. So I'm going to ask you questions about life in the service and or at the front or under fire. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. How did you stay in touch with your family? Uh, my mother only. I, we, you know, mail was pretty fast. And, um, it moved pretty fast. I don't know how. But the only person I was in touch with was uh, my mother. What moved fast? The mail. Oh, okay. The mail. And make sure you got your mail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, it's really important. Mm -hmm. What was the food like? Uh, I didn't complain because, uh, you know, I get a hot meal, might be sometime once a week, once every two weeks, I'll get a hot meal, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're due to this, I didn't complain at all. All I wanted to do was survive. What was, um, what was the food like? You know, how did uh, you, what, what, 
Well, Rash, see ration. See that's ration. A, that's a, that's that's ninety percent of what I ate was see ration. So when you got a hot meal, what did it consist of? Uh, depending on what it would be for that day. Did it real good? Uh, uh, could be uh, could be rice and and uh, pork chops, uh, beans, uh, beans. Uh, you know, a real good uh, yeah. menu, sir. With all menu. the fixings, huh? Yes, with all the <laughs> trimmings, everything. Yeah. Did you have plenty of supplies? Uh, well, I had what I need. I had what I needed. As that's far, all I had was, all I had was my. I was with my radio, my radio. I was three. It's a team. Mm -hmm. I was a sergeant. I had a PFC to carry the radio, and a lieutenant that uh, is my, my uh, supervisor. Superior. Okay. Did you feel pressure or stress? Uh, at the time, at the time, no. I didn't know what that mean at that time. Right. Yeah. Well, what about when you were calling those as, as an as, as as an observer? You call strikes, right? Yeah. Well, was that stressful or? Pressuring? No, because I was trained and I was trained and uh, you know it came kind of easy for me to you not know, to adjust the adjust the rounds and call ready for the you know. So what was your your general feeling? I mean, you said seven or eight people died in that that during that one event. How many of those events did did you take part in? Uh, uh was that just that? Just that one. Okay. Just that one. Uh, right. Aside from the day before we broke camp to, to go into Cambodia, mm -hmm. that incident that was the first incident. So besides being an observer, what else, what other things did you do? In Vietnam. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, in Vietnam, that's what I was a forward forward observer. Okay. Right. That was my primary primarily my my. How many years did you serve? Three. What year did you go in? Uh, 1967. And you got out in 70? Yeah. Okay. And how long were you in Vietnam? One. So the other two years, where were you? Korea and, 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 and the U.S. Where in the U.S.? Uh, I was in Fort Bragg uh, like for Carolina. basic. Then I went huh? to Fort Bragg for basic training. Uh -huh. Then I went to uh, Fort Lee, Virginia for AIT, Quartermaster School, mm -hmm. for stock control and accounting. And from there I went to Korea. Well, you're saying about the States. When I came out from Korea, I was stationed in Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, before I went to Nam. Okay. I was an instructor, a POR instructor, permanent overseas release. Uh -huh. For the guys that were going to Vietnam, I was an instructor... Uh, giving them class and what to expect in Nam, even though I've not been there yet. Right. You know. Okay, so how long were you an instructor in New Jersey, right? Okay, I came back from Korea in, when I came back from Korea, I came back from Korea in, in like June, uh, June of... Well, let's save that. After Vietnam, you went to Korea? No, Vietnam, I was out. After Vietnam? I was out. Okay, so... After Korea. Okay, so we're going backwards. Because mm -hmm. the way I guess the, the questions are here. So, you went to Korea before you went to Vietnam. Correct. How long were you stationed in, in Korea? 13 months. And what did you do there? Uh, I was uh, in a, a UP, uh, unit police. Oh, okay. All right, and, and what was that like? Uh, pretty good. It was great. You know, I worked at the gate. Uh, you know, I was a police that worked with a civilian at the gate, uh -huh. and uh, you know, we we depend on how many guys we had. I was in charge. We we made our shift. You know, we uh, we made our sh we did it, the uh, scheduling. Right. So oh, I got you. Yeah, okay. We did our own scheduling, and uh, we was we had our own barracks, and long we kept it clean. They didn't they didn't bother us. Were you stationed near Seoul? Yes. How yes. far? Uh, I was less than an hour outside of, I was north of Seoul. So did you go to, to the city a lot? No, I've only been to Seoul about twice. Okay. About twice that I've been to Seoul. So what, what did you do in your spare time? Um, and what did you do when you went to the city? Oh, we go party. Mm -hmm. Party, that's all we did. Get some R&R? &R? 
uh, well, daily R&R. I never, the, time, the only time I went on R&R, I got my citizenship. Okay. I went to Hawaii, my R&R, and I got my American citizenship there. Okay. Did you stay at the base there? Uh, I stayed at, uh, what you call it, not YMCA, the YMCA, uh, one of those unit, the unit okay. you have on the base, I forget what they call it. But I did stay, gotcha. stay there. Okay, so uh, did you interact with the Koreans, the people? Oh yeah, Koreans, uh, yeah, a matter of fact, I even got married over there. Oh really? Yeah, okay. I even got married in uh, Korea, uh -huh. but uh, I came back without, uh, without my wife, I came back. Oh really? Yeah. Are you married now? Yes, I'm okay. married now. Mm -hmm. And do you have children from the first marriage? or? Uh, not with a career, no. Okay. I have from my first marriage in the States, yes. Okay, how many kids do you have? Seven. And how old are they? Uh, let's see, from 1964 is the first one, born in 1964. So that would be, uh, 46. Mm -hmm. And the last one was born in 1992. Okay. So like 18, gotcha. 18 years. Okay. And they're all thriving, I hope. Yes, the last okay. one she's in, you know, in college upstate now. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, so, after the Carolinas, you went to New Jersey. After the Fort, after Fort, Fort Bragg, Bragg, I went to uh, Fort Lee, Virginia, Fort school, Lee. AIT school. Oh, that was for training for it to be for, an observer? No, that was to be a quartermaster school, like supply. Ah. Supply. And then what did you do? How long were you there? Uh, I was there for, uh, was there for about, about three months. Mm -hmm. Did you like it? Yeah, the school, it, 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 yeah. So where'd you go after that? Uh, Korea. You went to Korea after that? Mm hmm Alright, so now to Korea, then you went to New Jersey? Yeah. And how long were you in New Jersey? I was in there from like July until December of uh, of, of sixty nine. From July, July sixty nine and December sixty nine. Gotcha. So about six months or so. Yeah. Right. And what was that for again? Uh, per P O R training. I was instructor instructor in the headquarters brigade, uh, instructing the guys that go into Vietnam. We qualify them with the M sixteen. Okay. And give them, you know, the uh, give them the uh, what to expect when they when they get over to Nam to Vietnam. Got it. Okay. Was there something special you did for good luck during those engagements? Not really. <laughs> no. Pray a lot. Huh? <laughs> deal deal directly with God. I take it. Yeah. Okay. Um. How did how did how did people entertain themselves? Uh, you know, guys. Wherever you were at. Uh, guys go to party. Guys drink. You know, uh, while we were numb, you get a chance to drink. You know, you drink and stuff. That's about. That was my only vice drinking. Got you. You know. Um, what did you do when you were on leave? When you came home, did you come home? What did you do? Uh, come home uh, with the what the. The whole time that I was in the service and I came home and leave, the first leave I spent with my cousins and f the friends that I, I came to the States with because we were all in New York. Right. So we, uh, first leave was around Christmas and we, you know, tried to spend as much time as we could together. And then my next leave was before I went to, to uh, Nam. No, the next leave, yeah, because I didn't get any leave to go to Korea. Mm -hmm. It went from things straight. So uh, the next leave, uh, before I went to Nam, and, uh, you know, so uh, with my family and sisters and them, and, you know, uh, be as much with them until, because of going to Nam, you didn't know if he was coming back. Right. So, uh, you know, I... Because of that noise, I'm going to move up a little bit. Okay. Um. Right. So, and then the next day was while I was there, mm -hmm. and they sent me to Hawaii to get my citizenship. 
Okay. So, yeah. Uh, besides the place that you told me, how long were you in Hawaii? Uh, one week. And how did you like where? Which? The big uh, island? Honolulu, yeah. Okay. Honolulu. Honolulu. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, how did you like that? Great, because I got my citizenship from Jack Lloyd. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy, a Wi-Fi ball. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah. Well, how did that happen? It was this anniversary. They were celebrating, commemorating some anniversary there, and that happened to be the time that I was going to get my citizenship. So they had a ceremony, and uh, he was MC. Really? A massive ceremony. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got to meet him in person. So besides, you know, New Jersey and Virginia and, and, and uh, the Carolinas, we got Korea, we got Vietnam, um, we got Hawaii. Did you travel anywhere else while you were in the service? No, just the, just the stops, Alaska, Alaska twice, uh -huh. going to Korea and going to Nam. Um, right. A, Did you, a, you didn't spend any time in Alaska? No. Just stopping over, gotcha. Just stopping over. Okay. Um, do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual event? <laughs> Humorous. I can't even recall. <laughs> Nothing funny, huh? <laughs> okay. okay well, I'll have to let you out of that one, huh? Um, yeah. Did you? You, is, you have a photograph there that you wanted me to get a copy of, or? Yeah, that's that's the only photograph I can that I can come up with. You want to hold that up, and I can put it right on here. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, hold it right there, and uh, let's get a close up of that. And is that 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 was that your Korean wife? No, no, no. This is Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam. Okay. This is Vietnam. Ah, okay. All right. And, and what was her name? I don't even remember. You don't remember? Okay. All right. Okay. That'll that'll that serves that purpose. Here's a photo. Yeah. All right. And uh, let's see. What's next? Right. I asked you who are the people in the photographs. All right. What did what did you think of officers or fellow so, fellow soldiers? Uh, if they treat me, if they treated me, uh, you know the way I would treat it, that was fine. If they treated me fine. I didn't have any problem with them. It was like do unto others as you would have others do unto you. you. Correct. Okay, that's the end of those questions. I'm just gonna cover a couple of things. Um. What you said you went to the service in 1967? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where did you go to school? Where were you? Where were you born? In Panama. In Panama. In the Canal Zone. What year did you come to this country? In 1967. And you went straight to New York? Uh, I, well, I came into New York. Oh, boy, I know. Shut this up. Yeah. Shut this up. That's okay. Yeah. Um, you went. You flew into New York, and then where did you go to live? Uh, in in Delaware. Okay. And um, uh, how old were you then? Okay, I came in August 67, would have made me 21. What did, did you go to school or work or what? Well, I graduated from high school in 64. In Panama? Right. Uh -huh. Then I went to a trade school. Where? In Panama? In Panama. Uh, for, for what? Air conditioning and refrigeration. Okay. I graduated in February mm -hmm. of 67. Mm -hmm. Then I started working in the canal. In the Panama Canal. Right. I was working uh, on the tugboats that steers the ships into the locks. Right. Right. And uh, they were going to uh, terminate. They were going to have a layoff. And my brother, my mother was sent. My oldest brother was already here mm -hmm. in the Air Force. Right. But my brother before me, my mother was just getting ready to send him on an excursion to the States. And when... We found out I was going to get laid off. She included me in the sending me to the States for the excursion. Right. But uh, we during that time it was the draft. And my brother told us if we come up, he could probably get us sign up for the draft. And that's exactly what happened. As soon as we came, my brother picked us up, took us to Delaware, signed us up for the draft. And less than a month, they called us. Good, okay. Into the service. All right, so were you working before you went into service? Uh, I was working in, in Panama. 
in Panama. Right. But when you came here... I got a job. I got a job in a factory. Uh, I got a job in Delaware in a factory. Doing what? Uh, doing uh, assembling office furniture. Oh, okay. All right. How long did you do that? Oh, um, about a month. Okay. About a month. And then it was all over and you went to service? Uh, no, we went in. We went in. We went in service in November. I left and went to the excursion. Was for a fight. We came up for a fight. For a fight? Yeah, a boxing match, a lightweight oh. championship oh, match. Oh, oh, where was that at? In Madison. I mean, in uh, Shea Stadium. Oh, okay. Who uh, fought? Carlos Ortiz and Ismael Laguna. Oh, okay. Who won? Uh, Carlos Ortiz. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's let's move past um, the service. Uh, coming up on your um, separation, where did you separate from? Oakland. If, Oakland in, in California. California. Oakland, California. Uh -huh. uh, was that an army? Army you, base, yeah. You were in the army, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so, what were your plans coming up on separation? What did, what did you start thinking about? What were you going to do? Well, I figured I was going to lay low for about six months, mm -hmm. get, get back acclimated to civilian life. Right, back, yeah. I figured that's, that's what I was going to do. That was what my mind telling me that I was going to do. But? It didn't last more than 30 days. So, okay, you're in California. Did you stay there or would you? Uh, I stayed there for about three days. Okay. Three days. Stayed in California about three days. And then what, what was the, six, six, the, the succession? Then from there I came to New York. My cousin, that's where I was residing. Where in New York? Uh, Brooklyn. Okay. My cousin, I was staying with my cousin. I had a cousin there that, that after the fight, I, I was supposed to go back to Delaware by my brother. I never did went back. I okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, to be honest with you, I bet all my money on the fight and, and my, <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> so I came back and told my cousin, he said, don't worry about it. And that was the Friday of the week, and by Monday, uh, he got me a job in, in uh, Manhattan. Doing what? In a factory, in uh, laundry, consolidated laundry, washing the uh, okay. know, sheets and stuff from the from hospitals. And, uh, and that was 1970? Uh, this was 67 still. This is before I went this in. This is before you went, went in. in. This is before I went I was, in. I thought we were on the back end. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, oh, okay. No, this was before I went in. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. All right. So coming out of the service in Oakland, you said you were there for three days. Yeah. So then you went back to New York, mm -hmm. to Brooklyn. Yes. All right. And so what'd you do? Uh, I, about 30 days, I stayed uh, tra signing up for unemployment and all that stuff mm -hmm. and putting in for uh, applying for jobs. Mm -hmm. And I applied at UPS. To tele post office test and all that stuff, right. and United Parcel, and um, <clears throat> so I got called by United Parcel. So I worked, uh, I worked until uh, Christmas, and you know, they I a lot of people until some stay. I didn't get, I didn't get, I, they didn't keep me. Okay. So in I took a test for the telephone company in uh, like February, and passed the test and. The following week, uh, they call me. Okay. And that's been it until I retired in two thousand one. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. Okay. And so presently, you reside in in West Palm Beach. Yes. Okay. And wife and. Right, my wife and kids. Any and my children still living home? Yes, my. And you uh, said your mother. My mother-in-law. Mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add? Uh, not really, not, not I can really, okay. not I can really think of. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for your time. It was a very enjoyable experience. Uh, it was very interesting listening to you. And I got a little nervous with you when we were out in the uh, in the field there, uh, doing that observation. But we got through it. Yeah. Okay. I missed the last page of questions. All right, um, we did the we recall the days. The days the service ended. You were you when you got out of service. Where were you prior oh. to getting out to California? Uh, Vietnam. Okay. And you told me about what you did. 
days and weeks after when we did that. All right, you went to work. Did you go back to school? Uh, no, to further my education, no. Okay. Um, all right, so you didn't use the GI Bill for that? Uh, no. Okay, eventually, did you ever? Yes, I have used the GI Bill to go back to uh, regular school. You have? Yeah. Okay. Um, did you make any close friendships while you were in the service? Uh, no. Okay. All right. You did join a veterans organization? Yes. And the... Which one? Uh, uh, the Vietnam Veteran of America was the first one that I joined. Right. The second one I joined was Disabled American Veteran. Okay. The third one I joined was the American Legion. Okay. So those three organizations. Are you still with all three of them? All three of them. Okay. Right. Um, we got the career after the war was uh, with the telephone company in New York. Right. How many years? 31 years. Uh-huh. Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Um, since you're in a veterans organization, what kinds of activities does your post or association have? Uh, we, well, again, my Vietnam veteran uh, organization, our slogan is never again will one generation of veteran abandon another. And that is based on what happened to us when we came back. Okay. I guess everybody knows the story about that. So we make sh making sure it does not ever happen to other veterans. Right. Okay. Um, do you attend reunions? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which ones? All three for all three. Uh, the well, the you mean the veteran reunions? Yes. Uh, I, I did the DAV reunion. Uh, about I think July this year, July this year. But I will normally do that. I've never done the American Legion one yet. Okay. How did your service and experiences affect affect your life? Uh, pretty much that's what's actually molded my life, mm -hmm. my service experience. So would you say it was positive? Yes. Negative. Okay. Positive, positive. experience. Yes. Okay. And. Uh, now we've, we've finished, so I want to thank you very much for sharing your recollections. And um, we took care of all the paperwork, and we're back down to...